too long Forcing our darkest souls to unfold And forcing our darkest souls to unfold And pushing us into self-destruction Pushing us into self-destruction under siege with your medication. At least that's what it feels like to me and I'm sure to many others. See epilepsy is still under a lot of research and there's different types of epilepsies. Mine is temporal lobe epilepsy. So finding a medication that works to control at least your really bad seizures and keep you alive is difficult. It's almost like Russian roulette. Medication roulette I guess you'd call it. So, you know, I have temporal lobe. I tried a few medications, almost killed me, but we found Targetol worked. Started taking it one time a day. My seizures started getting worse, so we increased and increased it. Finally, I got to where I had to take 200 or almost like the whole amount you can possibly have of Targetol, which makes that medication four times a day for this specific medication four times a day. I can hardly remember anything. So that makes you have to depend on others to remind you to take med medication four times a day. So then you're having breakthrough seizures again. So you're already taking the amount of this medication. So let's just tack on another one. All right, some primidone. So we're taking two different medications now. All right, so okay, doing all right. Well, now your anxiety's high because when you have seizure disorders, your anxiety is high. It is bad. Imagine, you know, how many times I have waken up at a store to be in an ambulance or have almost died from a seizure. So your grandmas are very scary. But when you have temporal lobe seizures, you won't go into a grandma. These medications usually prevent that, except for at night I still have them. But it's still scary because you fear that it's going to happen so then you get put on an anxiety pill all right so you know that's kind of helping well then you know we get other problems that come up you know thyroid where did that come from I'm epileptic where did my thyroid come so that's where we're like medical mysteries and it's hard to find doctors that want to solve them and I know many of us go through this but like if something else happens Nobody knows like is that could be because of your you know epilepsy it could be side effects to your medication But I'm just gonna call it bad luck. That's what I'm gonna call it So we're, we gotta take medication five times a day now. Yes five times a day And now I see a hematologist once again medical mystery white count can't stay up. All right So what does he do? He tells me to go to my neurologist we think that your Tegretol is causing it. Well, okay, go to your neurologist. Neurologist is like, do you know how many times you were in the hospital trying to get you on that medication? Oh, well, pick which one. All right, well, bad luck. Now for the part that I really wanted to get into here is I hate when people say, oh, you look fine. You don't seem like anything's wrong with you. Why do you only work one day a week? You, you seem like you're doing just great. Uh, that upsets me. It makes me want to scream because you know what? These seizures are hard to deal with. Like, you don't understand. A grandma especially makes you feel like a train hit you. And you're sitting there. You're in pain. And even these little simple partial seizures or temporal lobe seizures, they, they wear your body out. You feel like... You know, when I wake up in the morning, I feel like I did parkour all night or I was fighting martial arts. I don't know what kind of superhero action I'm doing, but I used to be able to take ibuprofen and now I have to take heavy pain medication. So when people sit there and ask me why I only work one night a week, well, you know, I'm not going to go in and be like, hey, you know, how was your day? 
Well, let's see. Um, I took a bunch of barbiturates. Um, yeah, I uh, slept till noon. You know, I mean, that's a great conversation starter, isn't it? If you're 90, but I'm not 90 and that totally doesn't sound cool. So I'm not going to sit there and tell you all my business and be like, yeah, you know, took some medication five times a day and we're not hypochondriacs. So we really don't want people to know. And it's a scary thing, you know, talking about it makes us think about it. And that's why this has been so hard for me to do. So, you know, taking these heavy duty painkillers sometimes is all you can do and you're still in pain. There's days where I'm crying in the bathroom at work, you know, for a few minutes, I come back out and I'm putting a smile on my face. And I think a lot of us do that because we don't want people to know and we're proud, too proud to admit it. And it's, it's tough. And I know a lot of people feel like that. And I, another thing is, you know, at night when it's tough because when you're having these seizures, so not only are you in pain, but you wake up after a night of having these seizures and you've pulled muscles that you didn't even know existed. It's like, where did that muscle come from? And, and people say, oh yeah, it's like you worked out. Maybe you worked out too hard. I didn't even work out. I, like I said, what am I doing in my sleep? I don't know, but you can't walk. I had a Charlie horse in my leg not too long ago that like one of those painful ones that makes you want to cry. I had it for five days straight. Had one in my neck a few days ago. It is terrible. So they give you a medicine for that too, by the way. Because you can't have those uh, muscles stuck. So that's another medication. And so far these medications, none of them have any positive side effects besides keeping me alive. But other than that, you know, there's enough medication here to tranquilize a horse. Alright, so my last one. When you have epilepsy, you have periods of time, especially when you have them in your sleep, where you're scared to go to sleep. You can sleep once you sleep. You wake up hurting, but getting to sleep's hard. And you sit there and you think about the night terrors. You think about the night sweats that you're going to have. And these aren't sweats like you're working out also. These are the sweats where you wake up and you were drenched, but you're cold. You wake up shivering. You hurt. You wake up crying. You don't even know why you're crying. And you can't even move for a while. So, you know, they give you sleep medication because sometimes, even though we're on all this that, like, makes you drowsy, you still can't sleep because you're scared. You're even scared of dying because you don't know what these seizures are doing to you. You don't know if they're going to kill you. So, my biggest thing is, for anybody with epilepsy or even any kind of, you know, disability that is not visual. You know, when you sit there and you ask somebody what's wrong with them, just remember, for example, when I'm coming out of the bathroom at work and I hear everybody talking about how they're going to go get drunk and they're going to party and all this stuff and, you know, I don't get invited because when you're epileptic, you feel like the black sheep. Like nobody wants to invite you to anything because you know what? You're, you're different. You know, they, they might, oh, you, she might get hurt or she might, she's not cool, you know, and, and you feel out of place. You feel like nobody wants anything to do with you. And, and it, then it kind of makes you sad because you want to come out of your shell and people think I'm this outgoing person on Facebook, you know, social media. But in real life, I'm really, my life's pretty boring. I take care of my son. I'm home all the time. I can't do anything. So, you know, I hear these people talking about going out, having cocktails, and this is my cocktail that I'm going to come home and have. Like, yay. You know, really? Yeah, yeah, I'll come home and have my cocktail, which is fine. I can't drink. But, you know, people don't understand how it feels to us for not only the part of people asking us 
why we only work one night a week, uh, but the fact that we feel so out of place even working that one shift. And then when I come home and I take my medication after that one shift, I know that the next day I'm going to be in bed till one o'clock. But just remember that a lot of us who won't speak out, we hurt inside. We do. And we are people too. And it's hard for us to fit in. And, you know, even when we try, we feel awkward. And you try not to feel awkward, but you do. And just remember the next time, just try not to hurt somebody's feelings, asking them or telling them that they shouldn't be hurting the way they do.